and it has gone into operations which have been run illegally and which have deliberately defied congressional committees and presidents and blocked them from knowing. Now, there aren't many people who can prove that. I can because I'm the guy who's actually pr- sat down with members of the Senate Intelligence Committee and with the CIA director and people like this and, and seen that they are, in fact, out of the loop. And so we have concluded that all of this information has been held secret through an illegal application of the Secrecy Act. There are legal applications. There are reasons for confidentiality. There's reasons for secrets. But these particular programs have been managed illegally. And therefore, if you're part of an illegal operation, you can't cite the law to protect yourself. And this is in a letter that is in my first book, um, Extraterrestrial Contact, the Evidence and Implications, which is at DisclosureProject.org. And in this letter that went to the head of every agency in the United States government and every cabinet-level person, it states that unless otherwise directed, we're going to move to bring this information out to the public because we have concluded that these operations and programs are being run outside the rule of law and are therefore illegal. No one from any department ever said to us otherwise. And that's why a lot of people have asked me, what kind of blowback did you get from having 110 top secret uh, people come forward with the disclosure project? I said, not not at all. Not a single one of them was ever, ever called or approached. And the reason for it is that we did it in unison, in unity, massively, nearly a billion people worldwide saw that on the internet, and that's what we want to do with an energy device that's a free energy device that will run your house or run your car without oil and gas and coal. You can't sit around on this thing. Once you have it, you got to move it out quickly. Um, So there are two pathways to this as we see it at this point at the orionproject.org, and I want to be very clear on this. One is we identify someone who actually has an operational system, somebody um, like a Stan Meyer, who's passed away now, and his collection, by the way, and we were trying to acquire it, but another group actually uh, did get that collection, and we wish them luck. Um, I don't know what they're doing with it because we don't know, we're not privy to what they're doing, but the fact is there are people out there every year who stumble across this phenomenon and come up with devices that work. We need to be sure that if they do, they find their way to us so that we can launch it out there. Because the mistakes that are made usually is that people who have these devices end up having people buy them out, and those people then get threatened and they get put on the shelf. One of the problems is that I know for a fact that, and in fact I've talked to Dr. Tom Bearden about this, he, he, he knows people personally as well, who had developed such systems and they didn't have a pot to pee in. And the next time you see them, they're driving a a Lamborghini and have Armani suits. And basically, someone came along and said, here's $50 million, but we now own this technology, and then they put it on a black shelf. So the black shelving of the technology is another trick that's used. Now, to the inventor, it's great because they get rich. For the world, it's a disaster. So my position always has always been if somebody offered me $100 billion for such a device, I would say no thank you because I'm sure, certain that whoever would be offering such a sum of money would be probably out representing the oil industry or this global cartel of people who are defending something much larger. Now I'm going to give you the number of what that much larger is. It's $600 trillion. $600 trillion or so is what the commodities – and derivatives and futures markets are worth on what's traded in the ground, what, what they're trading on the ground, which is, which is the oil and gas and coal that's sitting in the ground. It's not even from the selling of them. It's what Goldman Sachs makes from all the derivatives. And it's, what, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all of that. It's huge financial, what we call churning. Uh, in fact, even the, the carbon, I was reading an article last night, uh, in a policy magazine about how Goldman Sachs had a uh, hundred lobbyists trying to get the cap and trade thing passed through Congress because it was going to set up a two trillion dollar derivatives market that they would be trading carbon credits on. 
it's all funny money, and it really doesn't do anything to advance things. No, of course not. It doesn't it? Doesn't you know? These are people who don't manifest or create a single thing. They don't. They don't make anything. They're not making a car. They're not making anything. They're making trillions of dollars. But the way they make it is the public doesn't understand this. I know someone who who is actually president of a hedge fund, and he's explained this to me. Is they make it through computerized programming trading and getting in line before someone else and it's uh, this is why these people make billions of dollars a year but they're not creating any true wealth for the world or for the nation never mind solving the problems and that's what's happening and so you have people who are doing this with trillions and trillions of dollars worth of assets i mean if the carbon trading offsets uh, alone, we're in the two trillion dollar market. Imagine what all the commodities that are in the ground are worth that they're trading. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So this is where the money is. It's more. It's much more than even the Saudis selling oil. That's a small potatoes. So w- basically, when you're taking on these kind of interests, you have to think differently. You can't think with uh, uh, in a normal business way. And this is the mistake that almost every inventor has made. They think they're just going to roll out another iPhone, like like Steve uh, Jobs comes up with another gadget. No, no, because a a gadget like that isn't threatening the fundamentals of a $600 trillion trading system based on funny money nonsense that these masters of the universe are getting filthy rich on. So – this, unfortunately, this rot and corruption and Wall Street nonsense is what it really calls the shots in Washington. There's no question about it. But in order to bring out one of these energy devices, you therefore have to have a strategic team of leaders, and that's what we've put together, to be the launch vehicle for one of these uh, technologies that will, uh, as I used to say, just say no. No to the national security seizure, no to the big money people who want to suppress it, no, no, no. We're going to get it out to the people who need it and to the world that needs it to save the Earth's environment, to give people free energy, and to transform the world into a sustainable planet. This is what should have happened with Tesla's genius and breakthroughs 100 years ago, Ted, right? And, I mean, uh, and, and others, that's from his uh, little later, uh, Moray uh, and his his devices, technology. Uh, yeah, T. Henry Moray, right. Yep, yep. and uh, – a number of scientists and inventors in, in developed uh, devices that utilize the, this, quote, free energy in some form or another. And uh, it's sort of all a matter of history now, and yet we're still using fossil fuels and burning things and using technology from the late 1800s, uh, basically by producing uh, steam and running turbines and running generators. Right. I point out that this is what a nuclear power plant is, a big steam turbine. That's all it is. We're mm. splitting the atom to create heat, to create steam, to turn a turbine, like the 1800s. The only difference is that instead of burning coke or coal, you're burning, uh, the, getting the heat from splitting the atom. And then you've got uh, thousands, tens of thousands of years of deadly radioactive muck that you've got to figure out what you're going to do with, So you know, which is its own uh, boondoggle. Uh, so I think yes, that... Here, here we have a situation where the real solutions keep getting suppressed, bought out. People actually have been killed. We, can, we know this for a fact. So we, what we have to do is take the strategy and the network that we've built that successfully did disclosure and apply that to these energy systems. Because if we don't, the next inventor that comes along, it will make the same mistake that was made when Nikola Tesla had J.P. Morgan say to him, you can't do this because if I can't put a meter on it, I don't want it out to the world. So this is the problem, and and it's a fundamental uh, a spiritual problem, in my view, of, of courage to stand up to these bullies that are hell-bent on destroying the world uh, and, and, and maintaining this sort of centralized power that they have over the planet. Um, and unfortunately, you know, they, they, it's reached the point where – the damage they're doing is so great that a few years ago I coined a term, planeticide, the ability to actually deliberately kill an entire planet. And this is what we see happening. The oceans are dying. The polar ice caps are melting. Thousands of species of, 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 of biological 
plants and animals are vanishing. Uh, in fact, the National Geographic has called it the, the, the great extinction, that's, but instead of the dinosaur era when an asteroid hit, it's all man-made. And this is something that's totally of our doing and that we can fix. And we have been called on by nature, and, it, and it's come through the minds of people for 100 years, the solutions, but they keep running into this lead wall. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what we want to find a way around. So there's two ways to do it, my friends. One is that somebody out there who actually has one of these things operational, cooperates with its evaluation, uh, its re- replicability. Um, the science has to be able to be uh, independently reproduced uh, and tested uh, and can be proven. Or we, and or we put together this team of folks that we've identified. And I have to say we have some breaking news on this. There's a very senior scientist, what uh, uh, the Secretary of Navy termed, one of the 14 national treasures in the uh, Department of Defense uh, system uh, who has been working with us. And this man is coming up on retirement, and he wants to work with us all the time. He also has a whole group of people of half a dozen of the most brilliant uh, physicists and engineers uh, and electromagnetic scientists that he wants to bring into this operation. Uh, uh, this is a man that I've known for nearly 20 years and is of impeccable integrity and incredibly knowledgeable. And we need to have that man and, and the people that he's working with in a, a properly equipped facility, and we need to raise about $5.7 million to do it. Yeah, I'd now, like to address that when you uh, have a break there, Steve. Yeah. Uh, right now? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, this, uh, are, we have I analyzed what would be needed to put together a group and fund them for a period of time that we feel would be enough to uh, start the process and develop at least uh, several different technologies. Uh, Steve has mentioned uh, we figure a budget of about $5.7 million would allow us to do this. Uh, and that includes uh, project management, includes a team of six to eight uh, science engineer, engineering people, uh, and coupled with consultants in specific areas where we might need. So we get a large enough group together so there's synergy and overlap and support from the different disciplines needed to address many of these problems and the issues. Uh, It includes such things as uh, the usual travel facility rental and the building of a facility that has the research equipment, uh, the electronic analyzers, the fabrication equipment to be able to do almost everything in-house in terms of the uh, analysis and testing. And, uh, and to put that whole thing together over a two-year period, um, it looks like about $5.7 million is very doable uh, to, to make that happen. Much less than that, you can't get the number of personnel uh, needed for the synergy to occur. You know, yeah. one or two scientists is just not enough because no one scientist has the full range of background necessary to uh, do some of this development and engineering. And right. the people need a, a support staff of people who know, uh, who are engineers. So we have scientists who can conceptualize, engineers who can create the motor, the generator, the device, uh, and perhaps build it uh, in a machine shop to make it all happen. And that's why we need that amount. It's, to some people, it sounds like a lot of money. Uh, it's the average Joe, gosh, 507 million. To anybody in the industry doing research and development, it's really a small amount, but it's, oh, it's a tiny amount. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, but it's very focused. It's not a broad thing. We we have over the past uh, three years plus many years identified specific people, as Dr. Greer has mentioned, and specific areas that are what we've termed the low hanging fruit or the, the areas of energy technology that are probably the most promising on a short one- to two-year uh, time scale. And uh, these include uh, four different areas. There, there are other areas, but uh, these are areas that we, would, uh, we see as very, very high potential, and including this uh, water-to-fuel hydroxy gas system. There's a number of people working on this. Uh, we know people working in the theory of it. 
uh, electromagnetic generators, uh, another area, uh, permanent magnet. Uh, that's a, those are solid-state devices, 